Okay, so recall pre particle Schrodinger's equation. S E. Um, uh, well, I, let me just copy it down. Let me write it down again. So <clears throat> it's a partial derivative of the wave function with respect to time equals this glob of parameters. The second partial derivative of the wave function with respect to space. Okay. And remember that h bar equals h over 2 pi. Okay. Um, uh, by the way, just for fun, I would like to mention that uh, you see Schrodinger's equation for free particle and even not for free particle, as we will see later, it's an equation which has first derivative in time and second derivative in space. So right from the get-go, it does not treat space and time on equal footing. And therefore, cannot possibly describe, it cannot possibly describe relativistic particles. It cannot possibly describe particles with exceedingly large energies. Okay, so it's a non-relativistic theory. There is a relativistic quantum mechanics, but it's more advanced, requires much more advanced than math. Um, okay, so, and we found that the following is a solution, plane wave, It is a solution. And notice I emphasize a, not the. It is a solution. Um, and you might, I might ask you, for example, why do I call it a plane wave? It looks like an exponential. And you will say, oh, there's this Euler's formula, right? E to the i uh, uh, um, theta equals cosine theta plus i sine theta. So if we apply that formula, where the theta is the kx minus omega t, you get cosine wave traveling to the right and a sine wave traveling to the right. E to the i times kitchen sink equals cos cosine of kitchen sink plus i sine of kitchen sink. In this case, the kitchen sink is theta. In this case, the kitchen sink is k is this combo kx minus omega t, right? This is a cosine of kx minus omega t plus i a sine of kx minus omega t. So both the real part and the imaginary parts and the imaginary part are uh, cosinusoidal and sinusoidal traveling waves. Okay, so, so they're, they're, travel, they're waves that travel uh, and the velocity of the travel, what's the velocity of the travel? Well, um, it's omega over k. By the way, you can always check the units of omega is one over time. Units of k is one over space. So one over k is space. So this has units of distance or dimensions of distance over time. And we're good. Okay. Okay. Well, so this is a solution to the Schrodinger's equation. What we did is we just plugged it in. Uh, but we found that but Uh, this is a solution only if omega and k are related. This is called a dispersion relationship by, um, by omega equals h bar over to m times k squared. And we thought, hmm, what is this? What's going on? And then we said, oh, but p, the momentum, equals h bar k, and e, energy, equals h bar omega. So this is actually equivalent to energy equals p squared over 2m. And you say, oh, oh, I remember. That's the same as in classical, classical case for free particle energy and momentum are related like that. Okay, that's where we ended.
uh, I want to talk about something called principle uh, of superposition. When I first heard the term superposition was my first physics class, university level physics class. I thought it means like not just position, but a superposition, like super duper position. But of course, uh, this just means superpose uh, something on top of something else. Uh, and what are we going to superpose? Well, you see, this is a solution uh, for some k, right? So um, if we know the k, we know the omega. So if one wave function, one traveling wave, is a solution to a Schrodinger's equation that obeys all the conditions, we'll talk about the conditions, but basically a solution to a Schrodinger's equation, and another wave function in an, is another solution, then their sum will also be a solution. Okay, it's a property of a Schrodinger's equation. If psi one equals a one e to the i k one x minus omega one time, and of course omega one has to be h bar over two m k one squared, and there's another solution with a different wave number and therefore different frequency a2 e to the i k2 x minus omega 2 t okay and of course omega 2 equals h bar over 2m k2 squared okay then psi 1 plus psi 2 is also a solution to schrodinger's equation okay that's a property of a schrodinger's equation uh, that's a very important uh, property of quantum mechanics because then you can build up arbitrary solutions. And in your homework, you saw that, well, we can build, we can construct arbitrary wave forms, arbitrary wave functions by simply summing up sine, uh, sine sinusoidal waves, right? So we have basically this plus this equals some kind of a you know, maybe this is not doesn't represent it very faithfully because the small ripples should be like this right so it will be something like something like that right okay this is psi one and i'm it's a complex wave it has real imaginary part let's say i'm just plotting the real part or just the imaginary part okay so i'm representing it schematically and this is psi two, and this is psi one plus psi two. A student asked me at office hours why I sometimes write psi of x and t, and sometimes just psi of x. Well, here I didn't even write any x or t. That's, that's just, sometimes it's obvious, right? So sometimes I, I suppress uh, the notation to make things a little bit more palatable, right? So this is, but obviously it's a function of space and time, okay? so. Um, we're allowed to add together, add uh, waves together to produce new solutions. In this case, psi nu equals a1 to the i k1 x minus omega t uh, uh, plus a2 e to the i k2 x minus omega 2 t. And remember, uh, we, we can write it like this. So it's a1 e to the i, a1 x minus omega of k1, because omega depends on k, t, plus a2 e to the i, a2 x minus omega of k2, t. I'm just sort of growing your comfort around this maybe uncomfortable math for you. For some of you, this is very uncomfortable. Okay, so if it's very uncomfortable, you want to spend time. A, what specifically is confusing? Bring your questions to me. Post questions on, on the forum. Send questions by email. Come to office hours, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Um, 
in your uh, homework, you learned that you can control the shape of the sum by adjusting the amplitudes A1 and A2. In that homework, the amplitudes A1 and A2, they were real, real numbers. But they can also be complex numbers, and a complex number has both an amplitude and the phase. So if you uh, allow the A1 and A2 to be complex numbers, then what you're doing is you're not just adjusting the relative amplitudes of the two harmonics, the two frequency components, but also you're adjusting the relative phase, okay? Just for completeness, A1 equals A1 e to the i by one, and A2 equals A2. Uh, actually, let me write it down, down like, more like the way I wrote it in the homework. So it has an amplitude and a phase, okay? Then, the total wave function will be given by A1 e to the i kx um, plus phi1 plus a2 e to the i k 2x minus omega 2 t plus phi 2. And again, omega is a function of k, right? So omega equals h bar square root 2 m plus k. Okay, so again, um, okay, not h bar squared, so h bar, okay, h bar. Let's just double check that the units are right. h bar, yeah. Again, what is this kind of a relationship called? H bar squared, okay. What is this kind of a relationship called between uh, wave number and angular frequency? Dispersion relation. It's called a dispersion relation. So if I, if I say, what is the dispersion relation for this particular uh, problem, you will know what I mean. It's a relationship that binds together uh, a wave number and a frequency, okay? So this is dispersion. Relation or relationship. Some people call it relation, some people call it relationship. Okay, so this is dispersion. So, yes, you can mix in waves of arbitrary wave number or arbitrary wavelength, but if you choose the wavelength, the frequency is determined automatically. Okay, so there's a lot of sort of wave math that was mentioned right now. Uh, I guess I should also remind you, you might not be comfortable with the notion of wave number. It's a strange thing. Wavelength, yeah, visualize. But remember, it's just the math, okay? And angular frequency. Okay, this is just math, just math. The only physics here is the idea that you are allowed to superpose solutions as long as each one obeys Schrodinger's equation. And there's another fine print is that as long as the boundary conditions are obeyed, okay? At this point, it's too much. I'm not gonna talk about boundary conditions, but just for the record, I have to say that. Okay, so that's the end of video one. See you in part two.